Welcome back to Patrick's Review. In this episode, The Foreigner. No, not that Jackie Chan film. I'm talking about The Foreigner, Steven Seagal. From 2002. <laughs> Hi there, welcome back to Patrick's Review. Your guide to the wild world of science fiction action horror. With me, your host, Amelia Sipka. Now, in this episode, we look at the film The Foreigner, which was a 2002, um, released in some places, 2003, Filmed by, um, directed by Michael Oblowitz, and starring Steven Seagal, in which was probably his first director video film. Now, this was a American Polish uh, co production, that, in other words, a co production between USA and Poland. It premiered on the 28th of uh, January, yeah, 2003, in the US, and on the 9th of June, 2003, in the UK. It was shot in 2002, but anyway. Now, I'm your host, Miller Sipka, and welcome back. <laughs> now, if you want to see the cover, this is the Australian DVD release. That's what it looks like. And do you want me to read you the blurb at the back? Alright. <laughs> Get ready for non-stop action Seagal stall. Hollywood action hero Steam Seagal delivers the goods in this explosive action thriller from the makers of The Art of War and 3000 Miles to Graceland. He stars as John Cold. It's really Jonathan Cold. A freelance secret agent who is as cunning as he is deadly. When Cold is hired to deliver a mysterious package from France to Germany, some very dangerous people will stop at nothing to stop him. But getting in his way is a decision they might not live to regret. With exotic locales and blistering action from the stuff classics like Under Siege, The Glimmer Man, and Exit Wounds, I wouldn't consider Exit Wounds a classic. The Foreigner is 90 minutes of heart pounding entertainment that will keep you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> now, if you want to track down this in Australia, it was actually released. As part of a few multi packs, on oh, no, a Steam Cigar multi packs you can find. Now, on to the review proper. With his pre millennial filmography, well, while his pre millennial filmography remains highly respected by fans of action movies, Steven Seagal's career took quite a nosedive once the 21st century arrived. His last theatrical feature, not counting the supporting role he had in Machete, was Exit Wounds, a highly overrated piece of junk. With some slick fights, but no soul. His next film was part of a two-picture deal with producer Andrew Stevens and his franchise pictures company, the enjoyably dapped prison film half Bars Dead, also the only one of Seagal's films to ever get a PG-13 rating in the States, you know, Australia got an M rating, which was at least a whole lot of dumb fun, not quite deserving of the mega, of the negative re re reputation it received by the mainstream critical press. After that, Seagal went straight to director video land, filling out the second of his franchise deal with the Michael Oblowitz thriller The Foreigner. Here, Seagal plays Jonathan Cold, a deep cover CIO operative who spent time in the Soviet prison during the Cold War and, once getting out, has kept a low profile in Europe. But while he might not be the first choice the CIA would use for any of their missions, Cold is still one quite deadly motherfucker of a mercenary. Before he flies to Poland for the funeral of his father, the American ambassador to Poland, he is given the chance to do a favor for a friend. The job is simple. Pick up a package from a safe house in France and deliver it to a client in Germany. Cole agrees, but once he obtains the package, he is hunted by a steady number of assassins trying to retrieve the package and silence him. Wasting no time in putting two and two together, Cole realizes that his former CIA handler, Jared Oliphant has been working with Colt's friend to use him to intercept the package, which is a black box flight recorder from a plane shot down over Europe by a missile sent by wealthy Euro industrialist and biochemical warfare operator Jerome Van Aken to silence one of his top engineers who was on that flight, and Van Aken who was, was also helping Oliphant keep the details of his biochemical warfare program under wraps. The package was exposed or was supposed to be belong to Van Aken's wife Meredith who was also having an affair with the dead engineer, and who was planning to use the package to force Van Aken to give her sole custody to their young daughter. Now, Colt contacts Meredith and tests her loyalty by sending her a fake package, of which she responds by sending Mercs to, to recover the real one, first proving to Colt the magnitude of the job's consequences. With Meredith's employment of Dunois, de, de de Colt had a surprisingly resourceful smoker who has been secretly helping run, run interference for Meredith by pretending to work for her husband, Cold must, must try to help Meredith escape her husband's grasp, while also skillfully avoiding the many assassins 
that both Fennec and Olefin have sent to recover the package and to retire cold per permanently. Having something in common with half past Dead in, in that it has obtained quite a bad reputation, even for one of his directed video filmography, The Foreigner, which earned a sequel a couple of years later, which I'll review a few, in a couple of weeks, is not quite as bad as what most people take it for. The only real problem this film has is that the silly attempts by South African-born director Michael Oblowitz to put NTV editing tricks into the film, slow-mo, sped-up film, rapid-fire editing, and so on, that while they were at the time not exactly wild, widely used in the action film industry, but did become standard for many a hack director right after The Foreigner came out, which, combined with the badly structured plot, makes the film unforgiving to all but the most patient and attentive viewer. It takes somebody who pays attention to every single piece of dialogue to put two and two together, and even then it's not always apparent where the piece is supposed to fit until you've watched the film a second time, something not many people are going to have the stomach to do given the action scenes here that are badly edited together, and sometimes key pieces of information aren't obvious. The fact that Dunoir gets killed twice is something that might break many viewers' sense of disbelief, even for it is obvious that he was wearing body armor. The vest is shown after Dunoir is blown out the window by a shotgun blast, but the second time when Colt shoots him in the chest with a pistol, no reveal the vest is seen, but you have to assume that he replaces his vest with a fresh one. There are some scenes that look spectacularly idiotic in their application. Cole is forced by one of Meredith's goons to pick up the package at a train station locker, which turns out to be an explosive decoy placed there by Cold to deter any jackass looking for it. The jackass takes the package to the, bed the bathroom and opens it, only to trigger the bomb and cause the entire train station to explode, while Cold makes a leap through a window to avoid getting singed. While the explosion looks impressive enough, what makes it idiotic is that there must be a handful of innocent bystanders inside the station when it blew making Cole's use of the bomb a spectacularly cruel decision. On that point, I also had a bit of an issue with the body count in this film. I know that Europeans are somewhat blasé about people getting killed, especially in Eastern Europe, but in this, film, in this film, people being murdered in broad daylight, and sometimes witnesses nearby, nobody seems to raise the alarm, and the body count in this film was quite insane for the storyline, to the detriment of the film's credibility, I and mean, people literally getting killed for no reason at all. <laughs> now, issues aside, the foreigner does have some unexpected strengths, mainly in the technical area. Oblowitz might not be good with telling the story, and with the ridiculously stupid out for a kill that made shortly afterwards Seagal, one of the most brain-dead films I've ever seen, clearly obsessed with style of the substance, he at least knows how to use the scenery to his advantage. And pretty much getting a good deal of mileage out of the French, German, Polish backgrounds as the, as the backdrop to this silly spy thriller. So even if you think Michael Oblowitz would be a bad director, at least you cannot deny that he surely knows how to shoot the shit out of the film, in more ways than one. The acting is average, with Seagal being an autopilot as he is during his dark decade of his career. Contrary to popular myth, Seagal was not overdubbed by another actor in this film as many of his later films were. The reason Seagal's voice sounds different in this film, in many scenes, is because Seagal actually dubbed himself, but he was pissed off at having to do ADR, so he passively aggressively changed the picture of his voice as a sign of contempt to the filmmakers. A little thing about Seagal, I mean, Bela Gozzi, the legendary actor from the 30s and 40s, was renowned for treating even the most ridiculous material, no matter how cheap he was paid, with the utmost respect. Whereas Seagal, he just, he just did films purely for the paycheck and not really having any respect. I mean, he's done some crazy things. I mean, he's not an easy actor to handle. And he's, like, for half hours dead, he actually went on the set with a karma expert who told him certain times if his uh, karma wasn't good enough to do a scene, he basically stormed off. And also for Machete, he actually insisted on being called by a fan, which had to be digitally erased from shots. The guy's just a wanker. But, you know, we actually watch his films for, <laughs> for one thing, Infoy doesn't really deliver on that in most of these films. Anyway. <sighs> But, you know, to be honest, in the enthusiasm department, former motocross rider turned actor Max Ryan does tend to steal the show as a constantly smoking, surprisingly lucky assassin du noir. Everybody else is not exactly giving it their all, but for Jeffrey Pierce, is pretty solid as Cold's brother. Now, The Foreigner gets a C, a 2 out of 10 rating, uh, sorry, 4 out of 10 rating from me. I believe the film to be strictly average, despite the very bad reputation this film has with the IMDb user comments crowd. If you think this film was bad, Try watching something like Submerged, Out of Reach, or Attack Force to compare with The Foreigner. Compared to those films, this one is a straightforward story, is relatively coherent, 
info it's pretty unforgiving to those who don't pay attention, and doesn't have anything really ridiculous to jack up its credibility. Well, except maybe that train station explosion. <laughs> now for the ghoul. Despite the body count, this is a relatively bloodless affair. Only a little blood is seen, and the wrecks of bullet squibs don't show any blood. Plus, all the Eastern European stuntmen, who are breed apart from their more well-known American counterparts, are wearing, are wearing uh, thick clothes due to the local weather. Now for nudity. Victoria Smirnova, who plays Jonathan Gold, Gold's girlfriend, seen in a brief early scene, is seen putting on her clothes after doing it cold, her butt visible for a couple of seconds. Also visible in the film is the rack on the fashion show model, as she walks the catwalk along with the fellow models of some European fashion show dance party, were called also attend some time earlier. Seeing a flashback when Cold realizes it's noir, and one of the Danish assassins who tried to steal a package earlier knew, knew each other and were friends. Now, to the DVD. The Region 4 DVD releases the foreigner. That was issued by Columbia TriStar Home Entertainment. When they were around in the early 2000s putting out all the Steam Seagull director video trash on, onto the DVD scene, Sony Pictures inherited the catalogue a few years later. This disc is identical to some of the uh, European Region 2 discs. Indeed, it's almost uh, completely identical to the Region 2 Scandinavian DVD from Columbia TriStar. So, Scandinavians out there will have the exact same DVD as we Australians had. And actually, info that this uh, this actually is, it says Region 4 on the back, but it's actually also cut both Region and cut for Region 2 and Region 5. Just so you know. <laughs> now, the film is an anamorphic 185 and has a picture that looks decent for an early 2000s DVD, back when TV sets were almost entirely standard definition. And like, in, when this, actually, when this DVD was released, most of the TVs around were the old school Capra Ray Tube TVs, old standard definition ones. Uh, widescreen TVs were just were not that common. In fact, widescreen TVs only really started to be become very common around the mid 2000s, so a few years later. Now, nowadays, this print does show its age with the post-processing grain and slight lack of resolution. The three soundtracks, English, Hungarian, Russian, all in 5.1, are adequate, while there are 17 subtitle tracks including English, and the only supplement consists of the film's trailer, and some previews for other films in the Columbia TriStar catalog, including Half Past Dead. Okay, so basically, a foreigner gets a C, a 4 out of 10, meaning it's average, the best. And But the thing is, in order to get the full enjoyment out of this, you should watch this and pay attention to the dialogue. Although, if you miss it the first time, it's easier to watch it the second time. If you can pull up with the, I mean, the action scenes are kind of a little wonky, but, but this one ain't as bad as what many of us Seagull's other later directed video films tend to be. This is one of the better ones. Well, it's, <laughs> it's probably the first. Okay, so that's it for that review. Now I'm going to try and do these reviews like once every second day or so, just pretty much pack them in for March. I'll do a little something special on the 21st of March, so you'll see about that. Okay, that's it for this review, and keep safe, stay safe, and enjoy yourselves.